We uh, <clears throat> have three selections each Lord's Day evening. And anyone who is a believer that has a burden for the things that we're asking is welcome to participate in this. Uh, we can have multiple prayers for the same request, and that's all right, too. We like to follow the Lord's leading in these things. Our first request comes from Romans 2 and verse 29, where it is written, But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and in circumcision that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. Our prayer is that we would live in the awareness that a real Jew is praised by God. Now the distinction of the Jews were that they were the people of God and everybody else was not. It, uh, that's, that's pretty exclusive. Now, whenever Jesus came, salvation is of the Jews, and we've been grafted into, by faith, we've been grafted in to that branch. And so we are the circumcision not made by hands, but that circumcision made without hands, the circumcision of the heart. There was a time back in the law what the law couldn't achieve, but that, that people would know what God required. Remember Moses telling the people that they, that, uh, talking about this circumcision, the, and that circumcision of ear and heart that, uh, that was required. But the law the law couldn't reach deep enough. It, uh, the, and there were people, there were people who lived. If they were alive today, we would be impressed with their lives. But they still needed something because salvation is the operation of God. And men, apart from that operation of God, can never achieve the fullness of what God is working in salvation. If salvation were something that we could do by any means, well then, uh, Jesus would not have had to die. Mm -hmm. If righteousness is attained by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So we're asking that we would live in the awareness that a real Jew is praised by God. So we have to realize what God has done in us that is praiseworthy. And that's why people don't often uh, associate these two things because they haven't seen the praiseworthiness. Uh, people seem to think that praise as it uh, relates to man is uh, somehow arrogance and, and um, it's uncomely. But we seek the praise of God. We desire the praise of God because in praising us, what he is doing is he is making manifest his work in us. And what God has done is praiseworthy. We're just the vessels by, by whom he demonstrates this. So it is a good thing to desire praise from God. And that this uh, circumcision of heart in salvation is directly associated with the, the praiseworthiness. Uh, of each individual as we've come to him through faith in Christ Jesus. So who will lead us in that request? Brother Jeremy. Sister Laura. All right. Our next request is found in Romans chapter 5 and verse 11. Where it is written, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Our prayer is that we would be noted for joying in God. When we ask for these things, they, uh, we, ha we have the specific request that's before us, but they always involve other things. It, because it is, we're praying according to the truth as it's been revealed to us, there are a lot of interconnections between what we pray for specifically and things that must be attained or given in order for these things to come to pass. Yeah. Amen. So in asking that we would be noted for joying in the Lord, we're also asking for an increased awareness of exactly what God has done. For us to live in the reality of it, the experiential reality of it, not with a profession that isn't followed by or accompanied by 
the attending works. Joy is one of these things that attends, a knowledge of our salvation. How can a person really be convinced that God is, that he's the creator of all things, that all power and dominion and authority belong to him, that he is for us because he has removed the enmity that existed by the death of Christ, that Jesus is med mediating and administrating this new covenant into which we have been placed, that we have a promise from God who cannot lie, that we have an inheritance eternal and undefiled in the heavens waiting for us against that day that we are holy and blameless before him in Christ while we are maturing now we don't we don't claim that that uh, we are are Christ equal in the earth or anything like that lest somebody miss misapprehend what we're saying but that that we have been a partaker of the Godhead and that he causes all things to be for us, regardless of how they're intended and where they come from. How can we know these things and so many more and not joy in the Lord? Amen. Right. It's when these things become dim to us. It's when we're not as aware of it. When, it, when it's mostly just here and not here. And I'm not saying that you don't have it. I'm just saying that this whole world is against you keeping a keen knowledge of that. And it'll rob your joy. It'll rob your joy. You know yourself that whenever you are most aware of, of the Lord and His presence with you and you're abiding in Him and Him in you, what can disturb your joy? What can? So we're wanting that awareness to live continually and constantly in the awareness of these wonderful truths that God has revealed. We haven't made this stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. It's above what men can, can imagine. You take the world's religions, what one of them have even imagined these things? If anything, they've come after the advent of Christ and they've, they've actually taken... Uh, the the revelation of God and they've twisted it somehow so that there looks it's the sa it's Satan's attempt to uh, skew the truth so that men can't enter in but before the advent of the gospel you go back and you find an ancient religion that even suggested these things <coughs> they didn't because they're too high. They have come down to us from God. And we want to abide in those truths. So who will lead us in that request? That we would be noted for. That people, this is what they think of when they think of the saints of God. We would be noted for joying in the Lord. Amen. Brother Tony, Brother Robert, Sister Laura. All right. <clears throat> and then finally, brethren, 1 Corinthians Chapter 3 and verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. We're asking that all believers would always be able to be fed with spiritual meat. Well, what is that spiritual meat? Where do we find that in here? Like, which book of the Bible is that in? Well, it's the whole thing. It's the milk of the word, the whole thing. And it's the meat of the word. Now there's some up, some places that really are a little meatier. You get to the words of Christ and some of the specific things that are said of Christ and of the Father that they have more to chew on in them, so to speak. But we want to be, we're asking for understanding, for fellowship with the truth in these things. I cannot even begin to tell you for myself, I know you, you could relate this experience for yourselves, but whenever you read something in Scripture and it makes perfect sense, and it might have been obscure to you before, particularly whenever uh, the things that stand out to me the most <clears throat> is whenever I read the Gospels. Now, I, I did this very early on as a child, but even later because... Um, well, never mind why, because. They, 
as I read these things, somebody would ask Jesus a question or else he would be teaching on something and then he would give a parable or he would go on and he would he would say something else and I I knew it had to be relevant because Jesus wouldn't just talk for the sake of talking I knew it was it had relevance to what the question was or what the situation was but I couldn't see it completely yeah. so it it, I couldn't fellowship in that truth. Now I had the milk of the word right there. Mm -hmm. I had the, the words. but And the meat doesn't come unless you drink the milk first. I can tell you that. But, but then there come a day whenever I read that and the Lord gave me understanding in it. Now, see, that's, that was the meat of the word. Now I understood why he said that. And not only did I understand it, I agreed with it. Yeah, I loved it that he said it just the way he did. Yeah. It addressed it perfectly. Amen. It didn't say too little. It didn't say too much. It was, it was just dead on. Yeah. And you understand the Father better. Amen. And you understand the Son better. So you, this is what talking about the, the, what we're talking about when we're talking about the meat of the Word. Someone preaches a wonderful sermon, you don't sit there and you go, that was pretty good. I, there were a few good points in that. But you can track with it. You understand what they're saying. You're, you're sitting there and you're making these, these connections. Everybody that stands up and talks can't make all the connections for us every time. Right. Amen. But you can make connections, some of which they've made in order for them to be able to say what they did. Perhaps some things they didn't make, which is why it's profitable for us to speak afterwards of these things so we can have a full, fuller or representation of what was spoken of. But see, this is this is where joy is. You you'll find so much more if you're hungry. You know, a glass of milk is good, but but whenever you sit down to a substantial meal, it stays with you longer, mm -hmm. and it it there's just more substance to it. It's a deeper substance, but it's all of the same thing. It's not a different thing. It's a it's a a, a a greater digest, a greater reception, uh, a fuller uh, being able to to apprehend more of besides just the surface words to really reach in there and to grab hold of the the intent and the meaning and the implication of what is written. So we desire this. We do. God has given it to His people, and it's actually wrong for us not to desire it. Yeah. So. Who will who will lead us in that request? And we're we're praying for God's people all over the earth. We desire that God's name be glorified, and a glorious God is is made glorious by a people who not only love Him. Of course, it begs the question: just how much can you love a God you don't know? But not only love Him, but have a desire to fellowship with Him in the truth that He's revealed. So. That all believers would always be able to be fed with spiritual meat. Who will lead us in that? Brother Aaron. Sister Laura. Brother Judah. 